Our next storyteller is one of the most unique gentlemen I have ever had the pleasure of meeting, hearing, just being around. If you try to look up a definition of him in the dictionary, there would only be a picture because he is indescribable. Please give it up for Mr. Sam Carr. Now, you wouldn't think that growing up with strong-willed people would lead to you getting cum in your eye, but <laughs> things happen. <laughs> now, for as long as I can remember, I, I was just taught just, just to dig into people, just kind of just get in there and see what I could find. And when you grow up around strong-willed people, you dig in and then you get to that little event horizon and the moment of emotional control, they push you back, no harm done, no big deal. Then I ran away, all the way across the sea to Japan, and I met Naomi. Two kids, married out of high school, in her 30s. My first dig in, she just said, boom, here you go. And each little piece was like just a fucking Cadbury egg, just sweeter and sweeter with each damn bite. You know, her husband was a really nice guy. And in fact, <laughs> I, I keep his business card in my wallet to this day as kind of a reminder. Her, her two boys, real sweet. And there were, there were times I should know something's wrong. Maybe it was when, you know, we were doing it in the alley and she said, oh, I gotta go home and take care of my kids. <laughs> or maybe it was the fact that I would throw up every time we would have sex. <laughs> But, but stay with me here. Once you get a bad idea going, you just got to run with it. <laughs> and you know, she would invite me over to her house. She, and I would, I would play with her kids. And they were, they were old enough to, to, to know who I was, to remember me, to remember my name. And there's some part of me, some real sick part of me, that wants them to remember me. That wants them to remember the fat cracker that almost completely <laughs> fucked up their life. <laughs> Think got that. <laughs> so one day she calls me up. And she says, Sam, I'm in love with you. I go, I'm sorry, what? <laughs> And she says, well, because I don't think I have enough control, I told my husband everything. <laughs> I'm sorry, what? <laughs> she said, well, he gave me two options. Either I can stop talking to you and stop seeing you, or I can get a divorce and marry you. I'm a person who, when I wake up in the morning, sometimes think, I think somebody owes me $5 just for waking up today. <laughs> when she had called me, my biggest achievement of that month is I had thrown up on a famous Tokyo landmark. <laughs> the choice was very, very clear. I said, stay away from me. About a week passed, and she called me again. Whatever. Two weeks passed, and she started coming by again. This wasn't the worst. The worst came on the last day. I was leaving. This was our last day together. And she says, well, let me get on top. <laughs> All right. I don't have a condom, though. I don't worry about it. So, it's, it's almost time for Boom Goes the Dynamite. <laughs> and she gets off. She finishes me off with her hand, and in the fit of rage and disgust for everything I had done, my own sperms rose up against me. And bam! Right in my eye! Now, I don't know if you've had this experiment, experience before, but, um... Trying to get soap in your eye to clean it out, mixed with sperm, is just the perfect recipe for just a bright pink eye. It's beautiful. So she tries to hide her giggles, but you know, come on. <laughs> she takes me by the hand, she leads me to the train station. This is our last moment together. She hugs me and she kisses me and she looks at me and she says, Sam, I love you. And this is when I knew I was at my worst. I looked her, I looked her in the eye, I took her hands and I kissed her and I said, I love you too. And I meant it. <laughs>